All right, guys, we're ready to rock and roll. Who's, who has the first question? David Johnson, go ahead. Hey, Lane, what can you tell us about the format for Saturday's Grove Bowl, how you're going to uh, divide the roster and, you know, how it will play out? Well, <clears throat> we work on that actually um, today and tomorrow, you know, after this practice here, just to make sure injuries and <clears throat> medical report that we have that. But <clears throat> basically, for the most part, the one offense plays on the same team as the two defense and um, versus the other side. And then the rest of the guys are divided between the two teams. They draft the players and draft the coaches and support staff and things like that. Um, so that's that's how it goes. Looks like there's going to be a lot of uh, self-guided prospects in the stands on uh, Saturday as well. What kind of environment are you hoping for uh, as far as fan turnout and things like that? Well, hopefully there'll be a lot of people there. Um, first time we've been um, in the stadium without, um, you know, the COVID restrictions. So um, would be good for a lot of people to be there and um, not for – the recruits there um, only, but for our own players and for our fans to, to enjoy something that they really haven't been, a lot of them haven't been able to. I hear you're throwing out the first pitch Saturday. How's your fastball? Uh, I've, I need to work on that. I have not practiced that um, in a lot of years. So um, I have done this before and not performed very well. So um, I think I need to practice a little bit more or, and warm up. I've done this without warming up and it hasn't gone well. Hey, what can you tell us about the development of Cedric Melton and what you've seen of him uh, playing that right guard spot this spring? Um, done a good job. Uh, has played tackle and guard and, um, you know, good young kid in our program. And we need to develop um, some of our young linemen um, to add depth so we can play more players. <clears throat> Thanks, Lane. Yep. Eric? Hey, Lane, in, in light of the injuries and so many people coming and going and whatnot, have, have you been able to uh, accomplish what you wanted to do this spring? I feel like defensively we have um, with a lot of new players um, and, a, you know, new look with those guys. And offensively, I feel like we, we haven't just because of all the injuries, especially to the skilled guys, um, you know, which has hindered kind of the next progression step for Matt. But – is what it is. You know, in the fall, COVID-19 was like a weekly conversation. I know you've had a lot of injuries, but has part of this been uh, COVID-19 guys moving in and out, or is, has that uh, been much less? No, that's been a lot less. Um, we've been fortunate with that. Hopefully that continues. This has been injuries. Neil, go ahead. Hey, Lane, I was wondering if after watching what you've watched with most of spring done, has this changed what maybe some targets or the areas of target that you're planning to look at with what you have left available spots for transfer portal? Um, I think that is a little bit, but I think because it's not like it used to be where you're just looking at grad transfers, you know, which is immediate need. Um, I, I think you got to look at this a little bit different into best players. Sometimes even it's not a position because guys may have two, three, four years of eligibility, eligibility left. So it's a little more complicated than it used to be. I was wondering if you could uh, give any details on your promising the, the biggest party in a long time. What all's, can you give any details on what's involved in that party? I don't know all that. Um, <clears throat> I think our social media people kind of made it look like I knew that or that it was my idea. So um, I probably better figure out if it's going to be the biggest party. I probably better figure out what to do for it. So um, we've got a few days left. Thanks. John, go ahead. Hey, Lane. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, John Rice. I know obviously he's not there right now and you've addressed that you'll talk with him after the spring on potential roles and whatnot, but I'm just curious how many dual sport athletes you've had at the quarterback position in the, in the past. And if there's kind of been like a common denominator with, uh, with those guys. Um, I think there's been a few over the years. Um, Matt Castle 
um, played baseball at USC. Um, we had another kid that didn't end up being a starter, but played as well. Um, so I've just always been about it if they want to do it. And, um, you know, it keeps them competitive, helps the school out. So, and, you know, I like recruits, obviously, you know, hey, when you come here, we really do it. Like a lot of people say it, well, we do it. And your other sport is the first when it's that season. How, uh, how detrimental has it kind of been in the past in terms of like, does it trigger any kind of setbacks for any of these guys, like based on your uh, prior experiences? Because obviously, you know, missing the spring can't be good. Yeah, I think it was worse before when our offenses were more complicated um, at the quarterback position. Um, you know, without tempo and all the protections and changing and all this, that's why you used to, you know, say quarterbacks used to rarely ever play as as freshmen because of that. And um, if you look around, that's changed. And, um, or at least most people have changed. Some are still, still doing that. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think it's a lot easier to play, just like Matt Krell had, you know, this record-breaking season without any spring in our offense. I, I just think it's become easier um, <clears throat> to pick it up, less reps. And, and how does kind of John Rice kind of compare to the other guys that you've had in that in the past uh, from an athletic standpoint? And yeah. Well, he, he's very unique, obviously. I mean, how many guys can go play slot receiver, you know, with a week or two notice in a bowl game and make significant, significant plays? Just tells you the type of athlete he is. You can see him making plays in right field the other night. Um, he's just, he, he's very unique. So, um, you know, look forward to having him back. Lane, in your experience, is there anything you can see in spring games that you don't see in the other spring practices or are spring games kind of more for the, the fans of the atmosphere than they are for evaluation? I think the only th the only difference is just to see if kids get nervous, you know, that it's a little bit more like a game, obviously, with some crowd and um, more build up to it, anxiety. So I think that you know, sometimes you can see that with guys you haven't played played before to see, you know, how do they, some guys just play better in an atmosphere like that and some guys struggle. So I, I think that that's the difference. With with so many mid-years this year, do you address that with those guys or do you kind of just want to see how they go about their stuff? Uh, we, we talk about it. We prepare like the game and the lead up, you know, the day is like a game and pregame and all those things. So, um, you know, just to get them used to it. Parrish, go ahead. Uh, Lane, you touched on this a little bit, but uh, Dr. Fauci set the first pitch back by like a decade or two. Do you prepare for this in any way? Um, I, I probably should know what you're talking about. Well, he, just, he, was, uh, he was really weak on his first pitch on opening day with the Nationals. Oh, I did not know that. And I'm just wondering, do you prepare for the first pitch? Do you throw it off the mound? Is is it a matter of pride for a former athlete? How do you approach it? I've done it a few times. Um, I think the last time was the Nationals, actually, I think, in, um, uh, down in Florida. And I don't think I did very good. I did one at Tennessee a long time ago. Didn't do very well. Um, so I think I need to take it more serious and not just think you can go out. Um, but it's not as hard as basketball. We did a Bruce Pearl and I did a free throw like thing a long time ago. That was really bad. So this should be a little easier. Yancey? Coach, talk about the development with DeSanto Rollins. We know he was hurt this past season and MJ Daniels as well. Thank you, Coach. Um, MJ coming in new with all these guys has been great for them. Um, you know, and uh, that's a big step going from high school, obviously. Um, Santo has done a really good job, um, you know, especially for someone who hadn't had much experience at all with us. Um, and it's been good to see. So last question, Blake Popmeyer. Lane, um, when it comes to your players and, and vaccinations, um, how do you handle that with them? Is that something you leave entirely up to them? <clears throat> Is that something you uh, as a program, try to educate them on or, um, you know, and, and are there any plans to do anything a as a team with that? That is a medical staff all the way. Um, I, I don't have a say in that, um, nor am I involved. And so we just do what they say. 
All right. Thanks, guys. See you this weekend.